And I feel like you guys care a lot about this algorithm stuff and these machines taking over and markets and everywhere else. And I mean, I don't blame you. I care a lot about it too. Ever since I saw Terminator 2 as a small child, even back then I knew we have a problem. Fun fact I just learned that was the first movie to cost a hundred million dollars. Well worth it. But I know we're all trying to stay ahead of these algos in the market and all this technology. We're running like this and we got freaking Alexa right behind us. Like, hello, the weather is good today. It's not fun, but at least it's Alexa and not the freaking Terminator 2 guy. That was scary. But anyway, I know I did that video about algorithmic trading a while back, but let's jump back into it. Let's do a series on algorithmic trading and robots in the markets and what all this means. So Alex at Makarov, see I'm showing you his article right here. This is the Macro Musings where he shares a bunch of cool stuff that he comes across because the guy is reading, you know, nonstop all day, studying, researching, almost like a robot. No, he's not, I'm kidding. But he shared this one article that's an interview with anonymous algorithmic trader. It's a very good interview and this guy knows a lot. So I'll link to this Macro Musings. You could go there and then you'll find the link to this article. So one of the questions they ask him is what new kind of vulnerabilities are introduced in the financial system through these techniques and they're talking about algos and you know quant investing what role will they play in the next financial crisis so this guy goes into talking about how one of the fallacies behind market booms is that there's an assumption that the world would behave in the future the way it had in the past so in 2008 that whole bubble was caused by the housing market right well that happened because people kept buying houses flipping them and the prices kept going up and up and up so that happened for enough time that everyone thought that was just going to continue happening because it happened in the past which sounds like a cognitive bias right recent bias oh I did a video on that but eventually you had that mania right where people thought they would just keep going up forever so they went on leverage and kept buying and buying and flipping and flipping and you know it's the greater fool theory who's gonna get caught holding the bag when finally people aren't buying anymore that's how most every bubbles work Bitcoin the tech bubble everything so he talks about how that fallacy that things are gonna keep going higher like they have been in the recent period that's intensified in the case of quantitative investing because all quantitative models use historical data to train themselves. So as these quantitative techniques have become more widespread, the assumption that the world will behave in the future the way it has in the past is being hardwired into the entire financial system. So you know how these algos work, right? They're back testing based off the data you give them. And naturally, the algo is going to assume that whatever has happened before is going to keep happening. So it optimizes to that scenario. But that is not smart because you know in markets we have different regimes, right? And these regimes can be very, very long. Like from 2009 until now, we've had low interest rates, tons of quantitative easing. So that creates a certain type of market, a real, real easy market where everything you touch just goes up. It is beautiful, kind of, but also disgusting, you know? But think about an algo that's using that data and is just optimizing for that. Where now, if we're facing a raising rate environment, things are gonna completely change. And that algorithm is not gonna perform, which is the best case. Worst case is that it's managing so much money that it blows up. So optimizing based off just recent data, that's not gonna work long-term. See, you can't trust the robots. They're not that smart yet. Skynet. Then he said that another fallacy that led up to the financial crisis was the assumption that financial markets were so efficient that participants didn't need to do the underlying work to figure out what the securities were actually worth. Because you could rely on the market to efficiently incorporate all available information about the bond. All you need to think about is the price that someone else is willing to buy it from you or sell it to you at. So he's saying that people start getting lazy. There was a lot of bad investments going on, but the things were getting flipped so fast with the price rising so fast that no one cared. They're like, okay, if the price is going up, it must be good. Let's play the game. A game of hot potato, where the potato is not only hot, but it's rotten and full of disease on the inside. It's a black potato. Not from a racial standpoint. I mean, it's, it's a black potato because potatoes get moldy and stuff and they get that color. Jesus, why would you assume that? Potatoes start out brown anyway. I mean, they don't have that far to go but anyway if the participants in the market are expecting the price to efficiently represent how much the thing is worth well that doesn't work all the time because we have boom and bust cycles that are all based off psychology intrinsic value is not so intrinsic i don't even like that word because value is just completely subjective isn't it so you're saying if all participants believe that the market is efficient and is pricing everything efficiently then price starts to become arbitrary a word i can still barely pronounce sadly the price starts to become detached of any analysis 
analysis of what the bond or asset represents. So if you apply this to the AI and the algos and all that, a lot of these things end up relying on those same assumptions of market efficiency. So if they assume that the price of an instrument already reflects all the information analysis that you could possibly do, then they're vulnerable to that assumption being false. That's what algorithms are mostly doing, right? They're basing things off price. But sometimes markets are pricing things incorrectly. So he gives an example. Is Uber worth 60 billion? Well, Uber is worth 60 billion because we believe someone is willing to pay 60 billion for it. Maybe the actual value of the revenues that Uber will make in the future is zero, which is what we see with a lot of these companies, right? These unicorn companies, they're valued so highly, but they're not even profitable because again, value is subjective. And here he says, in the current environment, we rely on liquidity to sustain prices for financial assets. And this is the current environment I was talking about since 2009, this easy, easy money. When the Fed is pumping money into the economy, everything's gonna go up, regardless of if it's crappy or not. But when that liquidity dries out and you're forced to rely on the things that those financial assets actually represent, like cash flows, you'll see painful shocks if there's a big disconnect between the price and the reality. The same kind of shocks you saw during the financial crisis. So think about it this way, right now, and most of the time, really, the prices in the market are determined by how much liquidity there is. And I know I still got to make that liquidity video. It's coming. So if there's money being pumped in the system, that money just goes directly into assets almost indiscriminately. Whatever it is, just put all your money in it. It's going to go up. But when that liquidity eventually goes away, like when we have a rising rate environment, the Fed starts putting the brakes on the economy, or if you have another recession and you're out of bullets and there's not much more stimulus you can do, that's when all these fake fluffy businesses that are just built off an idea and not revenues and actual profits, that's when they come collapsing down. And the real solid companies with actual profits, that's what people are going to be invested in instead. But if you have things like algorithms and people, because really algorithms are just a reflection of people, right? If they push those things up too high based off liquidity, well then when things change and the liquidity is gone, the actual value might be here. And then that's when you see that big gap. This is all air and it just collapses real fast. Nothing real sustainable in that business. So yeah, it was bad in 2008 and every crisis before, but with algorithms that are managing a bunch of money they're just going to take these human biases and accentuate them even more so the next crash could be even worse because instead of prices collapsing from here to here they can could be collapsing from up here back down to here so these algorithms are not perfect they have these same biases because that's the data we're feeding them right i mean some machines and algorithms like dalios they're much better because they have much more data and you know bridgewater is just a different league so their thing they say that their machine that does all their investing for them they say it could work for the next next hundred years without them even touching it. And one of the reasons why is because they've put the data through that machine from various different regimes, going back hundreds of years or something crazy like that. Now that's very different than what I assume a lot of the algos right now just being based off the last 10 years. So that same bias that screws us over people is going to screw over the algo. Now we're going to talk about this more, but right now, if you haven't already, make sure you sign up for this FOMO trading guide, because this is one of the things you can read that will help you get rid of the biases that you have. And these are the same biases that I was talking about that screws over these algos as well as screwing over us. So there's some great tips and tricks in here that will help you get rid of FOMO and other emotions and biases. Definitely check it out. There's a link up above and down below. Click it, put in your email and I'll send it over to you for free. Now we're going to go over more about these algos. We're going to keep diving into this topic. If you want to see those videos, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so that you get an email when those videos come out. Subscribe. We do seven videos a week on all sorts of markets and business stuff. It's so much fun. Hang out with us. Also, smash like on this video and comment down below with what you think about these algos. I want to hear your thoughts as we go on through this stuff. And yeah, subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Stay foul out there. Bye.